This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1201, How Top Performers Use Positive Psychology Even When Things Are Bad, by Ramit Sethi of IWillTeachYouToBeRich.com, and I'm Justin Malik. This is the podcast where I act as a personal narrator for you for free, usually from blogs, sometimes from books, but in either case, always with permission from the authors. Today's author is normally narrated on Optimal Finance Daily, but this one fit more into the personal development category, so I thought I'd read the article here for you. If you like this episode, definitely check out Optimal Finance Daily for more. But for now, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. How Top Performers Use Positive Psychology Even When Things Are Bad by Ramit Sethi of IWillTeachYouToBeRich.com Have you ever wondered how it is that some people are basically fine no matter what happens? They always find a way to come out on top regardless of the curveballs life throws at them. They seem to live by the motto, when life gives you lemons, make organic artisanal lemonade. Meanwhile, other people, even with the bigger advantages, somehow lack the ability to plan and execute and end up failing. Sometimes we know what the problem is, but can't fix it. Other times we self-sabotage. I see this all the time. It's heartbreaking and so unnecessary. On the surface, it's easy to dismiss positive people by assuming they somehow got a lucky break. But if you really study what's going on, you find that luck has nothing to do with it. There are real skills involved in not just surviving, but thriving. One of these skills is positive psychology. Over the last 12 years, I've relentlessly studied and interviewed top performers in business, sports, medicine, art, and more. I found that skill and talent will only take you so far. The rest is mindset. But it's not as simple as others make it sound. Your positive psychology and mindset start with setting yourself up for success. Let's dig into four powerful tactics that you can use today to change your mindset and ultimately change your life. Step one, minimize failure by picking the right goal. One of the reasons that negative self-talk creeps in is failure. And one of the main culprits of failure is setting the wrong goals. Too often we don't give ourselves a chance to succeed. Here's what I mean. A goal someone might set is, I'm gonna learn Spanish and use it as leverage to get a raise or a better job. The problem is, I want to learn Spanish is a huge goal. Then, get a raise or a better job is yet another huge goal. Where it fails is we don't know what to do right now, today, or even this week. When you come home from work tired, how are you going to get started on this vague goal? A better way is something like, I'm gonna practice Spanish three times per week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5.30 p.m. for one hour each. By December, I wanna be able to order in a restaurant. When you get specific, you set yourself up for success. Plus, you allow yourself small wins along the way, like, yes, I practiced every day this week. The result is, instead of feeling the sting of failure, you have the joy of victory. That's positive psychology in action. Action step. My mentor, BJ Fogg, has a free program called Tiny Habits. Use this framework to break down your goals and get started right away. Step two, eliminate what drains your positivity. Now that you've picked the right goal, you wanna give yourself every chance to achieve it. And one of the ways you do that is by not getting bogged down with other things. We all have things we wanna get done, but realistically just aren't going to happen. If you try to do it all, you end up with little to show for all that effort. The things that you do get done aren't done well. You're stressed out, distracted, overwhelmed, which means your mindset is anything but positive. But when we're doing the things that support our strengths and goals, we're in the state that positive psychologists call flow. Flow state is being in the zone, the focus state where you're most productive, you lose track of time, and things just seem to fall into place. Getting to flow isn't random. It happens when we eliminate all the other stuff in our lives, the unproductive meetings, responding to endless emails, people and things that drain our time and energy. The trick is to be brutally honest with yourself about what you really want to do. I used to have an inbox full of things I wanted to say no to, but felt that I couldn't. We all have this, invitations, obligations, things we don't really want to do. I've tried saying yes and then resenting it, and I've tried ignoring the request, neither made me feel great about myself. So I got honest with myself and others, said no, and took back my time. Action step, pick just one thing to say no to today. Once you do, note the freedom and closure that you suddenly feel. Remember this next time that you feel obligated to do something. 
Step three, shut up your inner critic. Once you know you're on the right path, it's easy to doubt yourself. Brian Koppelman, the writer and the filmmaker behind movies like Rounders, Ocean's 13, and The Illusionist said, quote, know this, whatever your favorite movie is, at some point during the writing of it, the screenwriter felt completely lost, end quote. It's too easy to let your inner critic overtake your positive psychology. But here's a secret, everyone, no matter how successful, feels that too. When you're in the middle of trying to create something, it can feel like you're not getting anywhere. And if you didn't know it was going to get better, that this was just a normal part of the process, you might give up. This is where positive psychology comes in. What keeps me going when I have a difficult project is that voice in the back of my mind that knows that it's going to be okay. If I keep working at it, I'll figure it out. Action step. Today, whatever project you're working on, map out your mindset. How do you feel at each stage? If you write it down, you'll be able to recognize it again during the next project. When your inner critic creeps in, you'll be able to keep your positive psychology and continue attacking. Step four, become unshakable. Contrary to popular belief, positive psychology is not something some people have and others don't. We all know someone who is resolute in the face of difficulty. How did they get that way? It's not luck or genetics or the it factor, whatever that is. It's a skill. You can develop confidence too. You just listened to the post titled How Top Performers Use Positive Psychology Even When Things Are Bad by Ramit Sethi of IWillTeachYouToBeRich.com. Again, he's narrated very frequently on Optimal Finance Daily where there are posts about how to save more, spend less, how to automate your finances, what to invest in, all that kind of stuff. So do check out that show for more. That's Optimal Finance Daily. But that's enough for today. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow with a post from Tiny Buddha or two posts where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.